Hey everyone, Mr. Chung here, continuing our talk on hydrocarbons. I'm sure you are all thrilled. Uh, this is chapter 22.1. Reminder, you should be reading your book and taking notes on your book. It's always important to get multiple sources um, and multiple ways of learning the same material. All right, so let's get into it. We finished talking about straight chain alkanes the other day, and so now we're going to move to branched chain alkanes. So because a carbon atom forms four covalent bonds, like it doesn't only need to bond to hydrogens, it can also bond to like multiple carbons, which results in branched chains. Now, in organic chemistry, branches on a hydrocarbon chain are discussed as if they were substituted for a hydrogen atom on the chain. So if you think back, um, if you look at this, like if you look at these structural formulas here, just imagine that we substituted one of these H's with another carbon, all right? And so that's why when we're talking about branched chains, we call the carbons that are branching off substituents because they're substituting for what would normally be a hydrogen there. It's gonna be easier if we take a look at it in a picture. So if we take a look at a picture here, all right, if we have a parent alkane propane here, but up here we have a carbon instead of a hydrogen. Of course, remember hydrogens are filling in everything where we don't see. Okay, then that's the substituent. Here on hexane, okay, the parent chain is one, two, three, four, five, six long, so it's hexane, but we have three different substituents here, three carbons replacing hydrogens uh, up here. And then again, of course, hydrogens fill in the rest. Now the longest continuous carbon chain of a branch change hydrocarbon is what's called the parent alkane. And remember, you're gonna to have to actually count the carbons because it doesn't always like look like a straight line like this. And then everything else is considered a substituent. Okay, and eventually we'll get to it, but halogens, oxygen, nitrogen, other things can be substituents, but we're only gonna deal with carbons for today. All right, so a hydrogen carbon a hydrocarbon substituent that is derived from an alkane. So basically an alkane attached on a, to a longer alkane, like a short one attached to a long one, is called an alkyl group. Okay, so you can just think of an alkyl group as an alkane with one of the hydrogens removed because it's just attaching to another thing. Now alkyl groups are named by removing the A-N-E ending from the parent hydrocarbon and adding Y-L, okay? Now, we're only gonna worry about three alkyl groups here, but all of the alkanes we showed on the other day um, can be alkyl groups, but we're just gonna look at three. So one carbon is methane, two carbons is ethane, three carbons is propane, which hopefully you remember. And so the methyl group is just, they instead of having CH4, you know we have this bond here, we're just gonna attach to a longer chain, all right? So, Methyl is CH3, ethyl is CH2, CH3, and propyl is CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay, so when we're attaching these alkyl groups to a straight chain hydrocarbon, then we're just forming branches, and we're going to form and talk about what we're calling branched chain alkanes today. IUPAC is just, I don't know, the people who decide the rules about how we name these things. Now, they say it's quite straightforward. It is actually... It's straightforward if you take your time and work through it slowly like a puzzle. So we're gonna do that today. Now the name of the branch chain alkane is based on the name of the longest continuous carbon chain, which makes sense, right? The longest one gets the name, like the overall name, and then everything else is gonna be um, prefixes in front of that name, kind of like, you know, propane is, or Hexane is like a six carbon chain, and then what are we attaching onto it? We'll put in the prefixes. Okay, so each substituent is named according to the length of its chain and numbered according to its position. It's gonna be way easier to take a look at the actual picture, so let's do this. Okay, so let's take a look at this compound, all right? Hopefully you see, like, what is the longest chain that you see here? Let's identify that first. Pause the video, see if you can figure out which one's the longest chain. Now it's a little tricky. You should actually count because sometimes it branches off. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chain, but we also have a one, two, three, four, five, six chain. So it's pretty close, but luckily this time the longest chain is going straight. Okay, so we highlight it. And because this 
longest chain has seven, the parent hydrocarbon is heptane. So we start with heptane, like heptane is going to be in our name. Okay, hopefully you're following so far. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to number the carbons in the main chain. Now to do this, you're gonna number it in a way that the substituent groups have the smallest numbers. So look how we numbered it here. It's actually from right to left for this particular picture because if you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then you have substituents on two, three, and four. Now imagine if we numbered it the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going from left to right, then our substituents, is, then our substituents would be on four, five, and six. Okay, so you see the difference, namely at one to seven, right to left versus left to right. One right to left gives us the lowest substituent numbers. So you have to figure out which ones are gonna give you the lowest numbers before you actually number them. Now, sometimes they'll be in the middle and so you can number it either way. But as we showed in this example, and the reason why this example is like this, it'll show you that sometimes you number from right to left. It's not always from left to right. Of course, we could have drawn this drew this the opposite way and then we could have numbered it from left to right but you know they drew it this way on purpose so that um, you could see that but see look the lowest numbers here two three and four okay so we've numbered the chain the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use prefixes to indicate the appearance of the same group more than once now what we mean by that is see there are two ch3s here so that's two different methyl groups remember if we go all the way back here methyl is CH3, okay? So there's two different methyl groups. So we're gonna combine that and we're gonna call that two comma three dash dimethyl. That's telling us that di is there's two methyls. One of them's on the two carbon, one of them's on the three carbon. So I'll say that again. There's two methyls here, right? There's two different CH3s. One's on the two, one's on the three. The way we describe that is we say two comma three, that tells us the two carbons that they're on, dash dimethyl, meaning there's two methyls total. Okay, so we have two, three dimethyl. All right, and then we're gonna name this group two. Now CH2, CH3 is an ethyl group. And so this one's gonna be called four dash ethyl. Okay, so it's four ethyl. Now the question is, right? We have two, three dimethyl, we have four ethyl. Which one is going to go first when we're naming this compound? Well, we list the alkyl substituents in alphabetical order. However, you ignore the prefixes. You ignore di, tri, and whatever. So four ethyl is going to go first because ethyl starts with the letter E, which is before methyl, the letter M. Again, we're ignoring the di here. Okay. So the four ethyl is going to be listed first. And so you're just going to combine everything together. Write the entire name, no spaces. So the correct name of this compound is 4-ethyl-2,3-dimethylheptane. dash dash dimethyl heptane. Okay. So remember, heptane is the parent chain. There's seven of them. 2,3-dimethyl tells us that there are two methyls. One's on the two carbon, one's on the three carbon. And 4-ethyl tells us there is an ethyl, CH2CH3, on the four carbon. What I want you to do right now is go back three minutes, rewatch me explaining that again. Okay. Make sure that you understand how we name this because once you get the hang of it and if you keep yourself organized, you should be able to figure it out. Okay. But it, you know, I get it. It's complicated. Okay. Even I get confused sometimes still because I haven't done this for like 20 years. All right. So, uh, let's do some practice. Name this compound using the IUPAC system. Notice that the longest chain is not written in a straight line. They gave you a hint there. So what's my longest chain going to be here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's going to be my longest chain. All right, so <coughs> we're going to do the same thing that we did for the last problem. So step one, identify the longest chain. The longest chain has six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the name is going to end with hexane, okay? Because six carbons is hexane. All right, remember, we're all single bonds here. 
The next thing we're going to do is identify the substituents and their positions on the parent hydrocarbon. Notice there's two different substituents, right? These both could have been hydrogens, but they're both replaced by CH3. So that means there's, again, two methyl groups. Now, we didn't do this on the last one, but see, there's two methyl groups on the same carbon. So remember in the last one, we said two, three, that told us that one methyl group was on the two, one methyl group was on the three. Well, since both of these are on the three carbon, and why did I name this three? Because if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, that gives me a lower number than if I started from the bottom, one, two, three, four, like we, like three is less than four, so that's why we labeled it this way. So there's two methyl substituents on carbon three, so the prefix is gonna be three, three, dimethyl. Okay, di meaning two, three, three tells us that they're both on the three carbon. And then we just put everything together. Three, three, dimethyl hexane. We don't need to worry about alphabetizing because there's only one type of substituent here. Okay, so three comma three dash dimethyl hexane, okay? Now, if like if you get the name, okay, reconstructing the structural formula is just doing the same thing backwards, okay? Find the root word ending in ane, then draw the log longest carbon chain to create the parent, then identify the substituent groups, and then attach them, and then complete the structural formula by adding hydrogens as needed. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Draw 224 trimethyl pentane or isooctane, um, ignore that, okay? So let's just worry about 224 trimethyl pentane, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is what is the parent? All right, so for the parent, I'm just gonna ignore all this 224 trimethyl business and go with pentane. So pentane is gonna be five carbons, all right? So I'm just gonna draw five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna label them one, two, three, four, five, okay? 224 trimethyl pentane. I ignore the prefix for now or the front and I just stick with pentane and it gives me one, two, three, four, five. And then now I think about what is this telling me? Okay. I have, it says 224 trimethyl, which means I'm going to have how many methyls total? Three. Because tri means three. And methyl is what? I ask myself, what is methyl? Well, it's CH3. And then I ask myself, well, 224, what is that telling me? Well, that's telling me that there's a methyl, there's two different methyls on the two carbon, and there's one on the four, and that gives me the three total. So then I can just draw them in, right? CH3, CH3 on the two, so CH3, CH3, and then one CH3 on the four. So that gives me two, two, four, trimethyl pentane. And then the last thing you do is just fill in all the hydrogens you're missing, okay? Um, if you take a look at this, right, you just remember carbon forms four bonds. So you just add the number of hydrogens you need to get you to four bonds. So I look here, CH3, because this C only has one bond. So I add three H's here. This C has two bonds. So I just make that a CH2 and this one on the end has CH3. Okay. So it's going to give me four bonds total. All right, so I have posted this slideshow. This slideshow also has a glossary of terms and extra things, but at this point, you should be able to do the entire worksheet that I gave you on alkanes. And you know, if you need help, let me know, ask your questions, but hopefully um, you're starting to get this. Now, again, I know this is tough and it requires a lot of mental organization, but mental organization, regardless, you're never gonna look at alkanes probably for the rest of your life, but mental organization and being able to stay organized mentally is a skill that you're gonna be able to take with you um, in your life, no matter what you do. So make sure you take your time, get organized, figure out these rules and learn how to apply these rules and you know your brain will be better off for it. All right, good luck.